On the first breath in, we let go of all of our problems, concerns, schedules, and plans, and surrender into the love of God here present. We breathe out and let go. On our second breath in, we welcome a moment of silence. This sacred silence ushers us into the contemplative dimension of our faith. We breathe out and let go. And on the third breath in, we sink as deeply as we can into our hearts, into the depths of our hearts, where we discover, as always, the sanctuary space that is our sacred meeting place with God. In that place, we call out to the God of love to touch us in precisely the places we need God's compassion the most. The Catholic Community of Sacred Heart welcomes you to this celebration of the Most Holy Eucharist on the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Thank you for being with us to celebrate the wonder of our Lord today. In the Gospel, we're going to hear about narrow doors and wide doors. And I can hardly wait to see what Father does with that. So get comfortable and Put away all your other thoughts and worries and just spend the next hour with the Lord. Again, welcome. Together, we celebrate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
and and with with your your spirit. spirit. What a joy it is to gather together to celebrate Christ in his word and in the bread and wine become body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. Thank you. I welcome you along with Gwen and salute you for joining us to pray during this holy time. We come to the Lord, of course, just as we are. And I don't know about you, but many times the condition of my interior self is uh, a little bit in tatters. And uh, regardless, I always know that when I come before the compassion of the Lord, I find forgiveness, I find healing and strength. So let us pray to him. You came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring us your healing, compassion, and love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bid us forgive one another as you forgive us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who calls, caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, 
and I come to gather the nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them, I will send fugitives to the nations, to Sark, Tarshish, Pud, and Lut, Mosach, Tubal, and Javan, and to the distant coastlands. They have never heard of my fame, or have they seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all of their brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels, some of these I will take as priests and as Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, have you forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children? My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you're reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom the father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet. For what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you come from. And you will say, We ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. And then he will say to you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, what a gospel today. Woo! <laughs> Jesus is passing through villages and towns, preaching, healing, curing, doing what Jesus does on his way to Jerusalem, and we know what happens there. And someone stops him and says, Lord, are they few in number who will be saved? Notice, curiously, that Jesus doesn't even give the hint of an answer to that, the question is absurd, and the question is irrelevant, and the Lord spends no time on it whatsoever, but instead gives this incredibly beautiful teaching, one of the wise sayings of Jesus the Christ. He says, enter through the narrow door. This is in contrad contradistinction to the wide door. What can that be a reference to in our human lives? Oh, how I wish that the church allowed women preaching because our Gwen, pastoral associate here at Sacred Heart, has written the most insightful reflection I've ever read on this scripture. And you can find it on our website. And of course, for our parishioners, it's printed in the bulletin. But she speaks of a of a fortress representing uh, the kingdom, the palace of, of the king, of God, God's self. And there's a big wide door with the drawbridge can go down and throngs of people could pass through that wide door and uh, even a whole army could get through it and carts and cargo and all kinds of things. But around to the side is this private entrance where only a single person can go through one at a time. And Gwen sees in this marvelous wisdom saying of Christ that it speaks of personal relationship with God as fundamental to everything. God desires relationship with us. It is a personal universe after all. It's personal. And God, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, is reaching out for friendship, for love, companionship, and eventual union with us. But we must enter individually and on our own volition, with our own free will, to enter that small, narrow, narrow door. Now, saying that, imagine 
spiritually we're speaking of the narrow door. When uh, I have spent lots of time in silence, when I have really collected, recollected myself and gone to God to have uh, an intimate conversation, a heart-to-heart, and I do this every day, when I emerge from that place, uh, I actually feel very humble and very small. And I guess uh, the great Thomas Merton would call that the true self. But boy, oh boy, you know, I've got that ego to deal with. The ego kind of goes away during this time of uh, solitude with God. You know exactly what it is. It's that moment when you are looking at the face of a child and you're not thinking about anything. Your mind is quiet. You're simply looking at beauty. You know that feeling well when uh, a wind is blowing and do you feel the coolness of a breeze of an approaching storm and hear a rustle in the leaves of a tree and suddenly you're just caught for a moment in silence and there's no ego there. There's simply a moment of clarity and truth and beauty and joy. This is the momentary entrance into the kingdom. At that time, you and I are so small, we can pass right through that narrow door quite simply and have a beautiful experience with the king. But we have to dismount, don't we? The, even the vehicles that led us to that door, i got to leave my camel outside. I've got to leave my entourage outside. And most of all, I have to park my ego at the door in order to enter. Once there, I'm liberated at last for maybe one hour, <laughs> maybe one hour a day, from this mind that is always judging, always critiquing, always blocking and computing everything, the craziness of the ego mind. St. Teresa of Avila called it the monkey mind, jumping from place to place. And once it's off to the races, it just wants more and more stimuli, clicking with the remote looking for yet again another scintillating movie or news story or who knows what, people on a plane reading People magazine, wondering how Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are doing and getting excited about the Benefer effect. And wow, they're, they're certainly so inflated with the stimulation of things that don't matter at all, that there is no way that they can enter or even desire to enter that narrow door. My brothers and sisters, we become that beautiful, childlike, true self when we can learn to quiet the mind. We come less from here and more from here. This is the heart. Literally, the heart is in the center of the chest, but the heart of a person is here. And the mystics teach us the more we practice getting out of the headiness of things and getting into the heart of the matter, there we have close personal personal relationship with God. It is our birthright. It is the pearl of great price. It is our happiness, our breath, and our song. It is the eternal splendor, the eternal beauty, always ready and available, shining 24-7 with incredible love and compassion 
and tenderness. Oh, my dear God, that my ego would shrink. (laughs) And even one day that I might die to that little self. Maybe for now, I can at least die a little tiny bit every day to that ego, inflated, bloated, arrogant self. Whoever is humbled, Jesus will say, is the first. And many who think they should be first will be last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And so, do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? I do do too. And do you believe in his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? I do too. Do you believe that Jesus, who died, rose from the dead, that he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and to him alone belongs the divine right to judge anyone, the living and the dead? I do too. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do too. This is our faith. We celebrate with joy. Radiant in God's love and grace, let us voice our needs and concerns. For the church, that we may draw close to Christ, who is the gate into eternal life and the way to wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the governments of all nations, that they will respect religious freedom and allow their people to hear Christ's invitation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus teaches us that the first will be last and the last will be first. May we acknowledge that God's ways are not our ways and that only God knows what's in our hearts and how we are valued in God's sight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may accept the discipline God gives in order to strengthen us in holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all beginning a new school year, that they may grow in knowledge and wisdom and virtue and be kept safe from all harm in the months ahead, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick of our parish and for all who have asked for our prayers, the homebound, military, law enforcement personnel, first responders. We pray for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time. May they now share in the banquet of God's eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of holiness, as you receive our prayers, welcome us to your table with all your holy ones. Let us share your feast of life and love, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. 
Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Together we pray that beautiful and powerful prayer Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. We offer to each other now a sign of peace. And if you are all by yourself today, join me for just a moment, won't you? Closing our eyes and in silence, extending a gift of peace throughout the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. If 
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Dear friends, thank you so much for joining us for the Eucharist. We love hearing your comments. Thank you so much for writing. All those little things are precious and dear to us. Thank you for your notes that you send in, and thank you so much for your donations. They help keep our Mass online ministry going, and thank you. And wherever you are in the world this day, please 
experience the joy and the peace of us apostles here in Punta Gorda. You know, it takes a lot to put this together, especially with everyone's schedules. Everyone's kind of giving up vacations and they're uh, giving up other things to come here together to celebrate Eucharist for you and with you and for you. So my many thanks to my, my brother and sister apostles and uh, last but not least, we love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and be gracious to you. May he reveal to you this day his providence, tenderness, and care for you and all the days of your lives. May he at this moment touch you with the grace of his peace. The Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration of the Eucharist is now finished. We go forth in peace and in joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Sacrifice.